been here. Ain't no sense to me trying to kill nobody else. But that brother brought I was asked by the reporters about 6 o'clock, Brother Derek, how many people do you expect here tonight? Heck if I know. <laughs> but whoever comes here is going to be enough. Amen. It's going to be enough. And he said, enough for what? I said, enough to make a difference. Enough to ensure that justice will roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. Enough that we know that whatever happens in Florida, we're going to keep on organizing. We're going to keep on strategizing. We're going to go to the street. We're going to march. We're going to rally. We're going to do whatever. my friend. We were in DeKalb County fighting for Brady. Some big police were pushing me around. I was about half my size, didn't it? <laughs> Derek stood up. Then some folk was there. And when Derek stood up, I got behind him. <laughs> All of get to me, you got to get him. That brother loves his people. And he shows it. Not just on the radio. Not just by talk. But by his walk. We are here tonight because Derek Bozeman called us to come and be here tonight. We already wanted to go somewhere. We wanted to do something. We just needed somebody to call us. And the man that called us is not
My heart is made happy. I feel the duality of the great poet who said it was the best of times. Yet it was the worst of times. It's a time to try men's souls. It's a time that if you don't know God by some name, Allah, Jesus, Nirvana, Jehovah, Ogun, Elekbe, Oludu, Mare. If you don't know the deity by some name, then you're like a <coughs> ship without an anchor. Where did we go but to God? Uh, when you can't seem to understand it, Grandma and them used to say you'll understand it better by and by. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to wrap my mind around the thought that a 17-year-old could have been just walking to go get his little brother, a little playmate, some skittles and some tea. And in these yet to be United States of America, the man undisputedly, he don't even deny that he killed him. We have to sit up here and pray about whether he's going to get justice or not. I would have thought it was a slam dunk. This wasn't even close. He didn't even fight back. He didn't have a pen knife on him. He didn't have a, a, a nothing in his pocket. So what do we do? We come to God's house first. I have tremendous faith. I'm, I'm not quite what Reverend Nema. The Lord is not through with me yet. I believe in the Bible. The rod established a comfort me. I just tend to use one as a modern day tool equipment to use. <laughs> What do we do? We, we're here searching for, what do we do? What, where do we get an answer from? And I just go to scripture, no greater love All right. mm -hmm. that a man and a woman can have except that they lay down their life for their friend. Amen. Well, who is our friend tonight? You say, well, hold on, I'm not here with my friend. I left my friend back on the block at home. When you look at all these babies here, mm -hmm. When you look at these teenagers who are here, they are friends, they need us. And so while you've gotten a message in a very powerful way, as I'm sitting in this audience, tears rolling down my face even now, uh, when this young lady is saying, I believe the children are our future. Uh, but the question is, will we allow them to get shot down and no response, what future are we giving them? I don't want any young person to leave here under the notion that you, that we as adults cannot protect you. I don't want you to leave here thinking that we don't love you enough that we won't lay down our lives for you. I don't want you to get under the notion that somehow we're gonna let forces external to our community come and do you harm because I'm just here to let you know. Come on now. I just prayed that I would have been one of the neighbors down in Central Florida. It wouldn't be giving no witness statement about what happened. It would have been no death or no funeral to go to. The minute I heard that baby cry, I would have been running. Running. I'll give my life for my people. I'll die for my people, but I'll even kill.
But I learned from Grandmama Bozeman, you can't just focus on what's lost, you got to focus on what's left. So you can't even deny to hear about how can we focus on what's left. So tonight, if you came here, the choir was good, but we didn't come to sing. The message was good, but we didn't come. If, if, if just speaking was going to get, get us out of this condition, we've had some of the greatest expositors of the spoken word, some of them sitting right here on this stage that we've ever had. But this book that I read called Bible laid down a stand that said, if you want to be great, good. If you want to be known, fine. If you want to be something to somebody, then go out and that those who would be great among you shall be servants. So tonight we call you the servanthood. And it's come now to separate those who are serious from those who just came from good entertainment. That's right. We have some signed up sheets. Davis Bozeman have some. We got some up here. If you are serious about helping to save the life of some child, raise your hand. Look at all these hands. Do you know? I want y'all to look around. I want you to know with this many, uh, I'm an old field general. I ain't been to the U.S. I'm, I've been to the tried and true I'm, I'm a soldier from the streets. <laughs> with this many, I can shut down by two or three cities. We can take it back and do whatever we want with it. But here's what we want you to do. We want you to make a commitment to be a mentor. To some child. Other than your own. There's an expectation you're going to take care of your own. That's just called good parenting. But will you take care of somebody else's child that's not biologically yours? We got to do it. Now let me tell you how this works and then I'm going to get out your way. Because a lot, the hour has been well spent. People didn't know after the Price shooting. How many of y'all heard about the shooting at Price, high, uh, Price Middle School? I got on the phone and we called a meeting just like this. On Valentine's Day. And I asked Reverend McDonald, who was the first man I called. Let me say this. If you're not under spiritual guidance from a spiritual leader that's fearless, I ain't going to tell you you switch church, but get you a preacher that loves the Lord enough, that's able to ever this and not prove to this. So right back on this Valentine's Day, I'm gonna ask you to come. I know your wife. I know y'all. You know y'all feel like teenagers, but when you come, <laughs> you said, "Yeah, I'll bring my wife." I told y'all can go after you leave that. We came. We had about 25 people. Mm. Michael was there, mm. and uh, Molly was there. He's always there. He'll bring home a two-legged cat. I already told you. About that. <laughs> He would not let the cat go to the Humane Society. He'd bring him home with two legs. <laughs> Out of that, 70 people started a mentoring program at Price Middle School that lasted for the end of the school year. And 198 children out of 400 were part of the, of the mentoring program that was created, not with no great funding, but with great faith. <laughs> Here's what we want you to do. If you're serious, sign up. And people will tell you, how, I'm, I'm just a blunt brother. I mean, I ain't got no time to even play with you. If you ain't just uh, say you had a wonderful time at the service tonight and going on out the door and uh, keep doing what you're doing, but some of us are so committed to this that we intend to save the lives of these children. Now, don't ask me what school are we going to or what we're going. I'm going to ask you for two hours a week. How many of y'all got two hours a week? Mm. Oh. I know you got two hours because you watch Scandal on one night. <laughs> Praise the daddy me after that. Real Housewives of Atlanta all of our hours. So if you got time for that, you got time to help us. We, we are serious. How many of y'all know the times are so serious that we don't have time to play around? Uh, Trayvon Martin is gone. But Dion Martin is still down in the bluff. Yes. Right. Trayvon Martin is gone, but Susanna Martin is still down in Old Fort Ward. Trayvon is gone, but you're still here. 
And so it's not just enough to cry. When you get through crying, wipe your face. When you get through praying, get up because prayer without works is what? And so we need you to sign up, and I guarantee you within 48 hours, if you call you wish to serve, we're going to sign you up. We're going to get you involved. We're going to ask for just a couple hours a week because I know if we ask for more than that, you're not going to do it. I know us. I'm black too. <laughs> okay. So I know we ain't going to ask you for no money because I know us because I'm what, black too. <laughs> We ain't gonna ask you to take nobody to, to the movies uh, and all of that other stuff, cause I know us and I'm what? Black too. <laughs> but we got to love these young children yeah. to life. Yes. We used to say, oh, I love them to death, and they start dying all around yeah. us. Yeah. Do, but do you love them to life? Yeah. If you love them to life, then you'll be an advocate for them. If you love them to life, you won't let them get harmed, you won't put them in harm's way. If you love them to life, even if you're a single mother, you'll seek out a strong black man, whether he's the janitor at the school or a janitor at the church or whether he's a preacher on the deacon board. Let me ask you this, because there's another fallacy, and then I'm done, and I want Reverend Durley to come and talk about the psychological impact of what we, we're experiencing. I want all the black men in here to stand up. I want you to get me. Don't you believe that lie when they say black men don't care about the black family? Don't you believe the lie when they say the black man has walked off from his responsibility? Don't you believe that there are more black men in here than there are any other genders? Black man, I just got to ask you a question. How many of you, if a called on to help raise some of these babies sitting in this sanctuary or some of these babies outside this door of this sanctuary, how many of you would say, I'd be willing to work with somebody else's child to help bring them to maturity and bring them to manhood? Raise your hands. All right. In the Bible, they ask, well, who will go? For us, who shall we sin. And I hope by putting your name on this list tonight, you'll say, here I am, Lord. Let, let's put that in there, because we want you to go under the gumption of the Holy Spirit, or under some, di under some divine purpose. We don't just want you to go. We want you to go with a divine mission in mind. Here I am, Lord, send me. Brothers, we got to go. And, and here's the thing. Uh, we don't have a choice but to go. They need to see us. You know the greatest thing missing in the black community? The greatest thing missing in the black family? Is us. And you don't have to be the biological father. You ought to take care of your own. How you gonna talk about mentoring somebody else and you ain't take care of your own responsibility? Ain't got enough time for that one. You come back two more Sunday. I'm going to be the midday speaker down at Cosmopolitan AMB, and y'all all come out of that. But they need us. And the one thing we learned about Trayvon Martin is that even though Mama and Dad had separated, was divorced. Did y'all see that picture with him kissing his son? Did you see that black man loving his son? To life. Thank y'all so much for hearing. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. We have faith enough to come out tonight, not even knowing what we were going to ask you to do, but you trusted and believed enough to come out. Now you got the trust to go the next step and do the work. How many of y'all are committed to doing the work? Yeah. How many of y'all make some noise in here if you're committed to doing the work? How many of you who are out here in the audience already have programs that mentor young black men already? I want y'all to look at it. If y'all have a program, look around, mamas. Before we get out of here, we're going to tear a little bit. But I want y'all to get with us. I see Brother Carter, who has a program at Atlanta Tech. 
Uh, we got a number of folks here. We're going to make sure that you get with Because some of, if you need some help with your son tonight, or daughter, because we're not leaving the sisters out of this, make sure you see us before you get out of here. These sheets will be circulated. Thank you so much. You can have a seat. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Reverend McDonald, for providing this opportunity. But don't leave here before we sign you up. Uh, for the work that needs to be done. All right. God bless you and God keep you. And thank you so much for bearing with us.